sit back, strap in, and get ready for After Hours with TC Rastani. This is Abigail Harwich, executive producer, welcoming you to the show. And now, TC Rastani! All righty, welcome to the After Hours of Teaser Stani, the podcast. I'm Teaser Stani, emanating from the palatial podcast penthouse, and I am here with my esteemed panel of experts, and I'm going to go around the horn right now and introduce them all to you one at a time. First and foremost, my mentor, the host of Ricky Bittman's Jukebox, oh. exclusively on Spotify, Ricky Bittman. What's going on, Rick? Up, up, and away, hey. Up, 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 and away, hey. And of course, never to be second banana, the one and the only Quincy Briscoe, the milkman. And how are we doing tonight? We're doing okay. <laughs> and down there wearing a stocking hat, even though it's the middle of May. It's cold out. It is cold outside. You'd never know Chilly. it was the middle of May. South Boston Jeff. What's going on, <laughs> South Boston? Good. Good. Of course, South Boston Jeff is the host of Clouded Conversation, along with his co-host, Quincy Briscoe. Great show. All right. So we are back here at the big podcast penthouse and... Uh, to do a follow-up, breaking mm-hmm. news here. On our last episode, we talked about how you, Ricky Bittman, obtained fan letters to none other than the late actor David Carradine from Warner Studios in California, and we found someone in there who lives in Massachusetts, of yep. all things, yep. and you have in your possession right now an authentic autographed photo that you got an extra of from yeah. David Carradine 20 years ago. Yeah. And this is what we're going to send to this kid anonymously yep. because he wrote the fan letter 30 years ago. And, you know, the, the more the more you tell the story over and over, the more surreal it seems to me. But uh, And I've asked a couple people in confidence about this because, you know, we don't want too, the word getting out to too many people, but, you know, that we're going to do this. But uh, I, I, everyone says the same thing. I think if I got this in the mail, I think it would be the coolest thing ever. Right. So we're going to do it. So it's going to go out ASAP. Yep. What does that stand for, Quincy? As soon as possible. You got, got it. Or I like on the double. Stat. <laughs> I mean, he's getting, a, again, 1996 this was written. January 12th, 1996. In this point, in this, in this case, it means a signed authentic photo. Yeah. And that's what he's getting. Of David Carradine. You are the certificate of authenticity. Yeah. Because you actually got this autograph. Yeah. And we're going to. Um, now, here's the, here's the debate still. Do I, do I use my podcast episode uh, my podcast email address or do we make one up no you use your podcast you think so because i mean we're not we're not doing anything wrong no and you know obviously he's going to know something's up right i mean because it was postmarked like you know th- this year right right so it's not like it wasn't postmarked 1996 and it was just lost in the mail for 30 years so all right i'm just going to put middle of the night podcast at gmail.com and like a post-it note or something send him your sticker well i don't want to get too familiar in case he comes after me but wouldn't you think you're at home address? No, let's put it this way. Wouldn't it be cool if rather than have him go out and say, oh, okay, it's this, this silly guy, if he just emails to Middle of the Night Podcast and he does send an email, mm-hmm. next episode we'll read that email and we'll talk about it. And then we'll invite him on. And then we'll reach out to him. Right. Okay. So I, I think we should do it just a little. This, little, this, is, your, as, this as, is your gig. Just baby steps, you know? Baby steps to the door, baby steps you to know? the mailbox. It reminds me of that guy that was on with the Jenny Jones show who uh, had a crush on the other guy, and the other guy shot him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why the, do I keep thinking that, 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 would, that would put an end to the Jenny Jones show pretty quick? <laughs> Why do I keep thinking it's going to end I, up I like that? I forgot all about Jenny Jones. She was an attractive woman, Jenny Jones. She was. Wasn't yeah. she a comic? Yeah. She was a stand up comedian, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Jenny, if you're out there, we'd love to have you on. Yeah, there's a lot of she was. Uh, she said she was pinned down against her will by a male comic who went unnamed. But I had my I had my guesses. Was it the unnamed one. comic? No, <laughs> that, that would have been good. But no. Who he, do you think it was? Emo I, Phillips. I, I I just I have a sus- <laughs> I have a suspicion. <laughs> who has resurfaced, by the way? Yeah, he's all of a sudden. He's. Uh, I, I heard from one of our autograph hounds out there that Emo Phillips is doing a show not too far from here re- soon. Yeah. <laughs> Quincy, right. Quincy would like him. So who do you think uh, pinned Jenny Jones? <laughs> I, I, I can't believe he has to be Emo Phillips every single day. I'm scratching his head. And his oh, hold on. You got to get up pretty early. The- <laughs> well, whatever his gig is, yeah, well, he usually well, changes. Remember last uh, episode we were talking about how the basketball player didn't know Howard Stern and Howard Stern oh, was offended? God Do you think anybody knows who remembers who Emo Phillips is? I know. It's under 40. 
I'd rather meet Emo Phillips than Howard Stern. Uh, that's saying something from you. <laughs> but getting back, who do you think was the, the Jenny Jones For some spinner? reason, and I can't remember, there was debate back in the 90s when this one happened, and uh, I, I, another guy mentioned this to me, and I agreed with him. I think it was Robert Wall. Really? I think so. Oh. And I can't remember the what I'm basing that on. This is complete conjecture, and I am. this is all alleged. So well, he does a lot of conventions. We'll have to confront him. No. And say, hey, didn't I see you once on Jenny Jones? <laughs> not on the show either. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. You know, um, um, our friend uh, Jeff from Southie, Mike, he he loves the Marx Brothers. Yeah, of course. And I played a joke on him one time, and I said, there's a movie coming out, the biography of Hoppo Marx, and Robert Wool is going to play Hoppo Marx. <laughs> and I never saw anybody more angry in my life. <laughs> and I kept this going. He goes, well, who else are they going to have in it? I said, David Schwimm is going to be Chico, and Matt Damon is, not Matt Dillon is going to be Groucho. <laughs> he got so mad. <laughs> Oh man! I remember he was he was when going to come down to the TV show back in the early 2000s. We were going to have the duck dangle from yeah, the ceiling. And, and, yeah, it never happened. Maybe we should do it again. <clears throat> you know, I enjoyed his flywheel plays a lot. Yeah, I, I yeah. Really did. Mike Mike's very talented young man. He's uh, well, no, he's an old man, but we're all old men out there. Speaking of old, Quincy, how old are those cheese balls that are on the desk right next to you? I don't know. They taste pretty good to me. Um, well, you know, they probably have preservatives that'll last like three thousand years. Um, they're tasty. Okay, they're July thirty uh, first, uh, one twenty, uh, twenty three seven something. That was it. The lottery numbers seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I saw these tonight. I was just like, let's try these. We'll have um, to take a picture and put it on our social media. Not right now. When I, <laughs> I mean, look at the size of that thing. <clears throat> try some, man. Yeah. I'll, I'll try another one. Go ahead. I don't it. know why I'm eating these. This is this is uh, on air again. Go ahead. Try Are we allowed em. to eat on air? Of course. Is this <laughs> a, I'm going to try one of these. Is this that ASMR? Or whatever it's called? Oh, you ever watch those with the girls with the long fingernails? I can only take like two seconds. There's a girl in Australia that's like amazing. At oh. it. All right, let's see. Everybody dig it. No, yeah, they're not bad. I'll take another one. Before they're not as good as the planters cheese balls. No. Oh, those were the best. Well, to be honest with you, I thought planters only made uh, peanuts. They did. It's the same with Charles Schultz. They branched up. You know what's even, uh, what I like even better than planters cheese balls is planters cheese twists. Ah. Planters cheese twist? Yeah, they're like a, <laughs> they're like crunchy cheese doodles, but like in a twist. Wow. Yeah, huh? they, you can uh, find them some places. Mm. If you're that, if they're still so good, like how come you don't see them right now? Things come and go. Because we're not in a supermarket right now. But That's true. Because like planners, they're known for cashews, okay? And, and peanuts. And mm -hmm. peanuts. Mm -hmm. And um, But to be honest with you, this is a first time for me. Uh, planters cheese balls? You know what, Quince? These aren't bad. You know what I like about them? Unlike the planters, you don't have like an, an orange blizzard on your fingernails. Yeah, it's, not, it's not as bad. Yeah. Take some. There you go. So, all right. We have to get, we got to get serious here in the program. Sure. Oh, got to get serious here. This, well, this past weekend, we went on a celebrity stalk, oh. and <clears throat> it broke my heart because we went to see Steve Martin to try to get his autograph and a picture because Quincy has been a Steve Martin fan since b before time even existed, and I've known Quincy now for 20 some odd years, and Quincy has always talked about Steve Martin. And we had the opportunity to meet him. And I pre-warned you, because a lot of the autograph collectors that have met him before say he's not the friendliest guy in the world. But I knew you wanted to meet him. And tell us the story what happened, Quince. Well, uh, I'll take it with a huge grain of salt, but that's how it is. So it's like, uh, everyone's like, Mr. Martin, can I, if we get your picture? My friend here is like, oh, I'm just going to give you one of these. And that was it. Plus, Steve wasn't too much into it. But uh, the other problem was there was someone else uh, that cut me, one guy, and I won't even mention his Did name. Did he get his picture taken with him? Like, no, he didn't, no. Have, he didn't even have a camera. He would have, no. and he didn't have a camera. Uh, and he cut right in front of everybody. What an asshole. Oh, yeah. 
So it's like, you know what? Just take it with a huge grain of salt. You see, you're, you're too nice. You're yeah. too nice. But it's these guys like that that ruined it for, for you. But you know, uh, it did. I mean, Quincy was heartbroken, but he was rude to you too, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Steve Mott. Tell, give us your, give us your uh, recollection of uh, Operation Mott. Okay, I had my, uh, I had a still ready for him from the jerk, and uh, like uh, I was, and uh, is, I was the first person he made eye contact with when he when he got out uh, of his uh, truck, and I was like, "Would you mind signing an autograph?" And uh, and he's like, "No, I do not do that anymore. I only take pictures. I'm all through with autographs. Next, something like that." Oh, what a douche. But uh, like, uh, I'm and like, it, okay, so uh, like, uh, and uh, by the time he got through saying that, he was already halfway in the door and everything. And he was grinding was, his teeth like he yeah, was the emperor would, in Star Wars. Like, yeah, yeah, he, you could really uh, see the anger on his face. Like, mm. you know, what the hell? You I know mean, what? Next uh, time you see him, Quince, tell him to shove his banjo up his ass. Yeah. Even the law. You know, like, he's a jerk yeah. off, yeah, not I, a jerk. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, jerk I off. Said, you are a jerk. Or whatever. To play it down. Did you see Martin Short? I saw him briefly. He kind of like, while Steve was doing his, you know, <laughs> shitting on the world Push routine. Steve Martin into you guys and ran. And he just like, <laughs> went in behind. And he is a short little guy, too. So I give you a... Uh, so I can't, I can't, I can't judge Mr. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Short. So I give you a clip there with the, uh, try, 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 with the let it ride. And that left it alone with that, because that's a good, appropriate yeah, but way to he, play just, but The fact that you, we, were, there was, we were only the three of us and that other bum autograph kid who didn't have a camera. Kind of, yeah, it's not like there was a crowd there. There was that, no that, one there. That, that, that sucks. That kind of, that kind of Maybe should, that's they, what pissed them off. They kind of gave a shit again. Yeah, they a, call him lucky, but I, I like uh, he's uh, really a jinx, and I, I, ske- I skeeve whenever I see him. I cringe. <laughs> he, because he looks like, he looks hey, like, he looks like a, a, a leprechaun version of Frank Gallagher from fucking Shameless. Yeah. So, you know what? Like I said, try, try, try with the let it ride. But you, you see a silver lining in everything, and you got, you got the fist bump Steve Martin, at least, right? So uh, what what better way to put it? Because I'm better than that. Because when I see you know, you're fans. You're better than him, too. Yeah, better, better than him, better than that. People, I see the fans. Uh, it's like, sure, you know, um, sign autographs. You try to help them. That's what I'm here for. Mm. Well, because, that's uh, what the entertainment world's all about. You're supposed to. Respond to your fans, try to help them, mm-hmm. you know, um, but uh, he did just the opposite. Unlike uh, tonight, not that long ago, uh, first, you know, um, you know uh, should we mention the first restaurant I went to? <laughs> and then the second one? Go right ahead. All right. On the way home, the first restaurant I went to, uh, Kelly's, um, you know what, I had a lot of fun afterwards. It was roast beef and uh, some milk. And uh, people say, like, hey, all right. Um, For those of you who are listening out there who don't live in the Boston area, <laughs> this was Quincy's first visit actually eating a roast beef sandwich from the world famous Kelly's Roast Beef on Revere Beach. For the first time. <laughs> and he tweeted out a picture and they responded. They were all excited that you were there. And then uh, that's yeah, well, then tell about earlier today before we were doing the you podcast. You want to get serious? Okay. Like I said, I can be funny. I can be serious. So here I am tonight just picking up a dinner, you know, just a regular uh, call. So I walk in uh, and like there's a whole bunch of my fans, loving fans. Like, and I went over and responded to them, had my pictures taken with them. Now that is how the it's good done. entertainers you know, uh, respond to their fans. <clears throat> they, and they pounced on you. It, it was awesome. It was just lovely. It was just, you know. Um, You're a true star. Steve Martin is a has-been. You are the future of entertainment. Yeah, you know how to handle it. So enough yeah. about Steve Martin. A, yeah, he I hasn't never want to talk about move. him again. He hasn't made a good movie in 40 years. Yeah. Like, and the only reason that Plain Strange and Automobiles was successful, John Candy. No question. That's it. See you is later, he, Steve. Is he around still? No, going? Steve no, Martin he... should join him. Let's just put oh. it that way. John Candy's on him. No, oh. he's been he's been dead for a long time. He passed away. Now, getting back to this, what you were talking about there, Quinn. So you know, we're we're kind of fa- we, we, sure. we we're kind of famous. We do a podcast and sure. whatnot. Now, I learned this from the legendary Killer Kowalski. Yeah, remember okay. him, the pro- professional wrestler. It was everybody trained Triple H, China, everybody. Walter, and he's his his exact quote was that the fans can be. Bane in the asses sometimes, but you never refuse autograph because without the fans, you're nothing. It's true. So a lot of these celebrities forget that. And you know, you know who, who was right. also a big proponent of that was Elvis Presley. Yeah. Elvis was always very patient with the fans. How many Cadillacs did he buy for people? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he just it, he knew. And he goes and he says, it's 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 tough sometimes, but it's part of the job. Right. If you're gonna be this, this is part of you, it. You think Steve Mann, I know too we weren't gonna mention him again, but after being in the in the limelight now for what, almost sixty years, yeah. 
you'd be used to this. It wasn't like there was 55 people there. There was four. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like uh, Steve Martin doesn't know what he's doing these days. I mean, he may be uh, in his musician, but he had one of his biggest fans in front of him. Yeah. Yet he wanted to take a picture with a little, like uh, the 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 bummy lucky kid. <laughs> and I, I will uh, bummy. Uh, <laughs> scummy, bummy, I like that. crummy. <laughs> but scummy, bummy has bunny, like, I can just crummy. see something when I, when I hear the word bummy. <laughs> or is Fred Savage? He's a big dummy. <laughs> yeah, big dummy. <laughs> so thanks, no, but man. I know what it's like, Quincy, because yeah, you he uh, you were a little starstruck when I seen you when I like uh, when he like uh, yeah you were uh, like uh, you were a little in, impressed. I I could see it in, in your eyes and everything. I know what that's just like. I mean, I mean, I felt that way when I uh, met Cheech Marin about a, a couple of months ago, about six months ago, and Jack Nicholson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. But like, uh, and uh, even though uh, like I met uh, uh, Cheech at the Chilla. Uh, uh, That's you know, awesome. I, I got, yeah, uh, I froze and I, I forgot what I said to him, and mm. then I had to look, to look, to, uh, looked at the pictures to remind myself. But uh, <laughs> like, did your uh, teacher give you a good response? I, he was excellent. Yeah, I, I was like, I, I told him, you were a god to me. Your teacher, yeah. like, I've had, I've had all your albums and everything, and he's like, well, sit down. You are worthy, my son. See, I'm glad I didn't <laughs> go because that really would have bothered me because a nun once wrote on my report card when I was a kid to my mother. Too much Steve Munn. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been starstruck there, Ricky Bittman? Well, I did meet Steve Martin, and that was probably the biggest one. But I, I, I'll tell you, the, the person that shook me to my foundation was Greg Allman. Really? Because I'm a huge Allman Brothers fan. You know, the jukebox. Music sure, is number one for me. When I met Greg Allman, I said, Greg, would you mind if I shook your hand? And, you know, he was suffering from my, well, he had had bouts with hepatitis. And I was like, I thought he was going to say no. Because after I said it, I said, this is probably not the right thing to say. And he goes, sure, man. He shook my hand. And it just, it just blew me away. And I still got his book signed right now. Unbelievable. It just really, I, w- I was the most starstruck with Greg Allman. You know who I was first starstruck with? Who? Take a guess. Female. You have a guess. Um, <laughs> Mary Lou Hanna. No, but she was very nice. Christy Canyon. Ah, the other industry. Well, yeah, yeah, Christy yeah, Canyon. Yeah. It was she, 1994. She was she, someone special. And she was. She, she was. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fan. And she was signing autographs a at, at a store, and there was a line, and I was literally, and she's like, "Who are you, young man? Come over here." Like, hey, 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 yeah. hey, hey. You know, it's Christy Canyon. You know, yeah. you know, when you're like 13 years old, oh, yeah. and you're watching Christy Canyon, and now, yeah. you know, a few years later, she's actually in front of you. That. I've met a big. I've met presidents, other you know, movie stars. Christy Canyon was the first person I was I starstruck it, with, yeah. and she couldn't have been nicer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, when I met my favorite porn star, uh, like uh, Julie Ashton, you were there. Uh, like uh, uh, yeah, he, he, I had he, several Polaroids <laughs> taken, and you can see clearly how how uh, how excited I am in those you, Polaroids. You were a visual mess of happiness that day. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, because uh, she uh, well, uh, she's naked on my lap and everything. I'm wearing these shorts, and then like uh, you could see like you were uh, breaking sticks as they say uh, back in the yeah, old days. The, like I was salu- uh, My flag was saluting. <laughs> And didn't you talk to her about the kid from Christmas Story couldn't getting it up with her? Yeah, I, I did. I was like, <laughs> like Schwartz, hey, yeah. I see him all the time. I was Sco- Scotty Schwartz. She's like, ah, oh, how is he? <laughs> but no, oh, she she's a sweetheart. She's a, she was, oh, she a very, I wonder what ever happened to her. I was just going to say, she vanished off the planet. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, she certainly was a sweetheart. She did what, night calls on HBO? Yeah, yeah. That was a million years. Yeah, if you're out there. Night calls on, not on HBO, on one of those uh, pay-per-view channels. Oh, whatever it was. But like, uh, but, uh, if Julie Ashton, if you're out there, you know, give us a call. You know, I uh, met a, a week ago, I met uh, Lenny Clark. Of course, our good I friend. Got my picture taken with Do- him. Donnie T and Friends, a Rastani production uh, exclusive. And I said to him, I said, hey, Lenny, you know who I am? And he goes, no, who are you? And I said, I'm the guy that every time you ask Obama's real name, I have the answer. I said, Barry Satoru. He goes, Barry Satoru, I love that you know that. He goes, how do you know that? I said, my friend Pat, you know, he told me. Oh, yeah, conspiracy <laughs> Pat, he knows it all. Uh, e- Eloy Tap. Eloy Tap, yeah, his code word is his his conspiracy name. Uh, yeah, Lenny Clark's great. He was. He was very nice. Very, very nice guy. And uh, let's give a shout out. He was up at Giggles, his brother's comedy yep. club. And if you're ever in. Oh, here's a little scoop for you, actually. Oh, I, I said to him, I said, what are you doing here? You're not even on the marquee. And he said he was out in LA filming a pilot with John Cryer from Two and a Half Men. He says, the writer's strike hit, and he got out of town. He says, he's not crossing any picket lines. So they're waiting for that all to be over so he can go back out there. Speaking of the writer's strike, yeah. 
Did you see? Now we are, you know, in the in the, in the production of bringing back our award winning late night talk show TV mm-hmm. show. Did you see what that dirtbag Jimmy Fallon? He's not paying his staff because the, the writers run strike. All the other talk shows, I'll give them credit, are paying their wow. staff. Well, he's a jerk. He's a jerk off. All right, he's yeah. another hammer dagger. Um, but I think I just think, and everybody used to give Jay Leno shit. You know, we stole the Tonight Show. We did this and that. When when they had uh, a writer strike back in the day, yeah, he paid for all of his staff out of his own pocket. Yeah. Jay gets a bad rap by a lot of bitter people in the industry. Jealous I people. Think, I think Jay Leno is is just. I think he's tops. I really do. Jay Leno is probably one of the nicest yes. celebrities we ever met. Remember the time we met him, Jeff, and he was hammered. When oh he got, yeah, when he got yep. the Hasty Pudding Award. Yep, yep. Yeah. Even though he was hammered, you couldn't ask for a better uh, like a, a signed autographs. Took See, plenty. Of pictures, right. the Tasty Pudding Award. Hasty Pudding. Was I, think, I think I think that's, they should change. It. I think the Tasty Pudding is a better name. Yeah, <laughs> I'd much have, much rather have a Tasty Pudding. I mean, he said it right, right on TV. <laughs> hey, TC, what's going on? That's right. He, he knew did. you. He that did. was great. Well, you know, Jay's all right in my book. He always gets a bad rap, but I, I, you know, was he the greatest talk show host ever? No, no. I mean, he had. I mean, look what the position that guy was in. He had to take over for Johnny Carson. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's, you know, you can't do that. No. And, you know, he, and what did he do? He wrote it out for 22 years. I always, getting, since, you know, since we're getting back into late night wars, I guess, we'll be yeah. back into it soon. We have, of course, my co host going to be over here, Ricky Bettman. Yep. And, of course, along with OMG Abby. But well, let's go back in time to 2010. Okay. When that whole scenario was going on with Jay Leno and Conan O'Brien for the and Tonight Letterman. Show. And Letterman. And Letterman. Well, Letterman was just, you know, poking them to just to get, you know, ratings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like David Bill. Don't get me wrong. I know. Uh, but if you remember back in the day, Jay Leno said they were going to be on the Tonight Show for another five years, and then Conan O'Brien was going to do a seamless transition yep. and get the show. Okay. That happened. Right. All right. Conan O'Brien got the show. He did. The show tanked in ratings. Big time. All right. You're a network. What are you in the business of doing? Making money. Selling advertising. Selling advertising. Nobody's watching the show. You can't sell advertising. It's the same thing why uh, David Letterman did not get The Tonight Show. Right. He was perfect for 1230, that college crowd doing all that stuff. The old biddies were watching Johnny. 100%. It would have been a complete 180 degree turn if you're watching Johnny Carson on his final show on a Friday night and then David Letterman's coming in with stupid pet tricks. It's like slamming the brakes off. It's like all those people would have been like, let's watch Ted Koppel. Yeah. And true. the same thing happened with Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien is great. I liked Conan O'Brien. He was hip, innovative, Very but funny. he was a younger demographic. Mm-hmm. Jay Leno was the old people who bought the Doritos, who yep. went to the comedy clubs, who were you know were comfortable with him behind the desk. It was the fit. It was the fit. Yeah. So all that, and then when that happened, you know, they invited Jay to do a show. They knew that Conan wasn't going to last. No. They want. They didn't want Jay going to another network. Mm-hmm. So they gave him his little, okay, can you want to come on at 10 o'clock and do this little show, which was, even he admits was horrible. Yeah. It was just NBC holding him in, you know, in, you know, security. Well, we can't lose Abance. this guy. We can't lose this guy. And then, you know, and then, you know Conan, you know, shut up. I mean, it was yeah. just, it was a big mess is what it yeah. was. Yeah. And a lot of comedians side with Conan, but it's. You know, he, 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 like everything you say is one hundred percent spot on. It's just it was just the way it was. Right. Sometimes things are just the way they are, and you got to learn to accept it. I mean, they wanted Johnny Carson yeah. out for like ten years anyway. Yeah. You know, they wanted to get a hip new audience in yeah, there, no, but you know, Conan wouldn't have been a good transition, and Letterman I mean, definitely wouldn't have been a fit into the. Show. I was watching uh, an interview with Jimmy Walker, the guys you guys met a couple weeks ago, right. and he he did a, a show for like Emmy dot com or something. He did a, like it's like an hour long interview. He talks about his whole career. And uh, the whole Jay Leno, David Letterman, Tonight Show fiasco. And he was talking about how Johnny Carson, the NBC, wanted him gone because they wanted a younger crowd. He, They were telling, Johnny, there's a new guy in town by the name of Prince. You know, everybody loves this guy. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm going to bring in Buddy Rich to play the drums. Oh. You know? So <laughs> then what happens? The Arsenio Hall comes down the line. And takes Prince. And he brings in Prince, Michael Jackson. I mean, everybody. Yeah. And for a brief period of time, he had, in my opinion, the best late night talk show. Yeah. He did. 
He even had, had Jason Voorhees on his I was show. Say, he had Jason. He had Macho, Macho, Man, Macho Man, Bobby Heenan. He had no, uh, Gilbert Godfrey. He had everybody. <laughs> Tonk Man. Everybody yeah. in the world was on the Arsenio Hall show. Yeah. But that's just the way. But so everybody says, oh, you know, Conan and Jay, blah blah blah. NBC owns the show. Yeah. They're in the business to make money. If you can't deliver. You're out the door. And you'd think someone like Letterman would know that, and he still harbors the resentment. I think he did know that, yeah. but he realized, if I side with this new guy, yeah, yeah. the younger audience is going to come and watch me. That's true. So it's all a ploy, because remember that same year, he did a commercial, Super Bowl commercial. Oh, with Oprah and Jay. And, and Jay Leno. So it's all, it's, about it's, it's, it's Just like wrestling, it's all a work. It's a work. It's, it's all a work. A work. But uh, we won't have that problem. <laughs> no, when we come back, no, no one's going to come after us. We'll kill them. Well, we, we have we have Quincy Briscoe <laughs> That's right. watching the door, so no, That's nothing's right. going to happen down there. Unbelievable. So, how are those cheese balls, Quincy? You haven't sucking them down anymore over there? Yeah, I think they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, we've been uh, working on them together over here. Hmm, <laughs> tasty. <laughs> How many do you think are in there right now? How many how many cheese balls do you think are in that jar? That's a oh, good question. Oh, a couple hundred. <laughs> oh, well over a hundred. I'd probably say I'm, we're not going to count them because we'll get you know cheese ball dust everywhere. That would, yeah, would be a waste. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say this probably three twenty. Three twenty. Yeah, I'd say around there. Yeah. When you bought it uh, brand new, okay. Um, yeah, between I the four of us, we sucked down about 100 already. I think so, I would yeah. say that when you bought this, there was about 400 cheese balls. Probably, you're right. You it's sold by weight, not by volume. <laughs> That's what they say about everything. Uh, <laughs> sold by weight, not by volume. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just like Bull Montana. <laughs> <laughs> i sold by weight, not by <laughs> So how are things going over on the jukebox? Jukebox is good. I tell you, you know, I've been so busy. Episode 50, the Johnny Cash special. Hey, this is Johnny Cash, and I'm here to deliver you my very best episodes here. I'm here with my good friend, the Jukebox, who became Batman. And well, I'm here I'm, to deliver some good entertainment. I'm in the process of recording episode 50. Five zero. And it's, a, it's, it's definitely a labor of love. It's the first episode where I don't. I, well, I don't have Galen with me. Well, what happened? No, well, he's just, it's just, we're just talking about Johnny Cash. It's, oh, okay. like, it's, almost like a, it's almost like a VH1 behind the music type thing. Okay. And it's completely written. I wrote it all out myself. I got a couple of audio clips that uh, you know Eloy Tap helped me with. Unbelievable. And I incorporate those, and I handpicked the song. It's going to be a very long episode, and it focuses only on the American recordings, which was between 1993 and up to his death in 2003. But it's just taken time. He's, he was he made it to 2003. 2003. I've, when I think of Johnny Cash, I think of him like sometime dying in like the 80s or yeah, early he 90s. Was very frail at the end, but he made it. Well, good for him. Yeah, no, he did. And he right up to the end. And see, a lot of people don't realize what happened with Johnny Cash is right... I'll give you a little... This is a little preview of A little of preview 50. of episode 50. When Johnny Cash went with the 80s, the late 80s, he was regulated to playing like state fairs, county fairs type of thing. And he was playing... Um, Dinner theaters like uh, Branson, Missouri, and stuff like or that. Barry Williams headquarters. Exactly, John Davidson type of stuff. And it just wasn't. He had been let go by CBS Records. They 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 abandoned him because they couldn't find anybody to buy his records. They didn't know what to do with him. So when Rick Rubin, who worked with the Beastie Boys and uh, Ice T and all and all the all oh, the rappers yeah, and everything, yeah, Slayer and, and Metallica like and uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. He was, he was looking for an artist who just had kind of lost his identity, and the first person he thought was Johnny Cash. So he went to him, and he basically just took it all and just stripped it down to just the man in black and his guitar, and that's where the American recordings came from. And it was six albums between 1993 and 2003. Is his wife still around, June Carter? She died shortly before him, and that really? was the beginning so of that's the He knew he was going to go right after her. I mean, classic love story, the two of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, too bad. I, remember I, tell you, I was listening to Folsom Prison uh, recording today, and when she comes out on stage, <laughs> you, you should hear those prisons. Oh, the ovation. I yeah. mean, she, she was no uh, uh, Tammy Wynette, but, you know, she was a woman in a prison, for crying out loud, and you could just hear the crowd take a, kind of a little bit of a turn. It there. was like on the Bob Hope uh, USO things when he brought oh, Raquel Welch out on God. stage. Right. You know, he, he always knew the, the honey of the day to bring out, like, Susan Anton all of a sudden. Susan there. Anton yeah. is a name you haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> hey, how about that Susan Anton? Man, she's really hot stuff, right? <laughs> Susan Anton. She's, gonna, she's probably older than Bob Hope now. <laughs> Were you a big fan of Susan Anton, Quince? 
Probably was. What kind of uh, well, material does she do? Let's get a picture of her for you. you Susan Anton was also in the Jerry Pearlswig movie. Remember that, <laughs> Jeff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he stalked her outside of WBZ, and she's like, hey, what's going on here? Wasn't she uh, involved with uh, uh, Dudley Moore? Weren't they dating or something? Or was was she? I don't know. I, I don't know the uh, the gossip on Susan Anton. How? how, how? There's a picture of her. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, huh? Okay, no, that that's... Uh, what does she look like now? Well, now, and how, I mean... How, how, I'm curious, how old is Susan Anton? Uh, let's see. Oh, She's got to be in her 70s. She is uh, 72 years old. 72 years old. So she's 20 years older than me. Yep. <laughs> I she was... Uh, so she, let's find a picture of Susan Anton now. Let me just see. She was involved with... The, she married Dudley Moore. Really? Yeah. Look at the, look at the height difference. Hold on. Let me see this here. Oh, I can't see without my glasses yet. Uh, all right. It looks like a, you know what this is, in my sick mind, it looks like a picture of Han Solo standing next to Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Dudley Moore was like, what, five foot three or something? That, that's by the looks of things. And huh? with, with her, you know, 80s hair, she's at least, you know, at least a half a foot taller than him. See, it just proves that women like to laugh. Very talented. Or, 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 yeah, or his I mean, bank account. Know, height he, difference. He, he, I'm, wow, yeah. Let me see if she, we can find a picture of her now. Susan, Susan and what was she, at, what was uh, she right, famous right for? Right at anyway? level. Yeah, right at... Uh, well, well, she was an actress and an athlete, I think. Was she? I mean, I, I only saw her like, on Love Boat episodes and whatnot. Susan Anton now imagines... Uh, Susan, I did not wake up this morning thinking I'd be talking about Susan Anton's career. She doesn't look terrible. They saw her with Tony Dow... Well, he's I mean, dead. Yeah, but I mean, she looked like she held up pretty oh, well. I'd still hit that. Yeah, yeah. She beaver, that's real goofy. <laughs> yeah, she's she's still an attractive. Well, actually, she she looks a little different. I think she's had some cosmetic well, yeah, enhancement, unfortunately. But she's still a very good looking woman. And uh, and and Tony Dow, I realized how short he was. Too. Yeah, he's he's a munchkin. <laughs> well, we, well, he look, God bless him. He's gone. Yeah, he's gone to that big uh, beaver cleaver in the sky. Oh, she was also involved with uh, uh, Kenny Rogers. Boy, she, we're getting her a lot of airtime. Kenny Rogers, huh? Yeah. And she was and she was in Cannonball Run. It's the wood that makes it good. <laughs> but she's in Cannonball Run too. Wow. All right, that's enough about Susan Anton. Yeah, yeah. You know, Susan, if you're out there, we love you, honey. Yeah. <laughs> we're better than Dudley Moore on the keys, if you know what we're talking about. Yeah, right? e email after hours. Uh, that's we'll, right. we'll have you on the show. <laughs> we'll definitely have you on the show. That'd be an easy, quick flight. Come on in. <laughs> we'll, we'll show you the clip from Jerry Pearlswig's movie where he was harassing <laughs> you on the street. Hey, Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi, it's Jerry. <laughs> oh, hi. What are you doing? Huh? I'm making a movie. <laughs> I like when uh, Tony Randall admonishes him. Hello, Jerry. Welcome to Tobogan of Boston, Tony. We love you. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Uh, Tony Randall, you can't have one without the other. Nope. Now, uh, sure oh, can. Felix, you know what? <laughs> oh, well, uh, now, now I have a brand, we all have a brand new uh, reason to respect Jerry Pearlswick. We do. Yeah. Do, you want, do you know why we, we all, I love Jerry Pearlswick. For those of you who don't know who we're talking about, shame on you. Yeah. Jerry Pearlswick was the greatest celebrity stalker of all time. Yeah. And when he passed away, the title went to Jeff. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Jerry was one of the first celebrity hunters that I met when I was a kid collecting autographs. And Jerry knew everybody. Jerry wasn't shy. Jerry kind of reminded me of Quincy in a way. Yeah. That's when anybody ever says, what was Jerry Proswick like? I said, he was an older version of Quincy yeah. Briscoe. Didn't take no for an answer. Had balls the size of the universe. Yeah. And he all, what, his goal in life was to be a star. Yeah. And he did it. And, uh, Harvard University made a documentary on him following his exploits. Where's Harvard University today? Not, 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 not talking about Quincy Briscoe. <laughs> and one of his pals, this kid Jeff, who kind of reminds you of Lucky in a way, the kid, a, yeah, lot. a little yeah, bit. Yeah. A lot. Jerry wanted to meet Steve Martin back in the probably late 90s. Oh, yeah. Uh, and <clears throat> the way the kid goes, Jerry wanted a picture between the two of them, his wife, and Steve, Steve Martin and his wife. And it was the middle of winter, and it was in front of the Four Seasons Hotel in Boston. <laughs> and Steve Martin, as we've established, is a dickhead, um, mm -hmm. was being very rude to Jerry Pearlswig, who had emotional and mental problems. Mm -hmm. And Jerry, being the person who has never says no for an answer, yeah. went in and tried to grab Steve Martin to take a photo with him, and he slipped on the ice and fell and rolled out in the street. <laughs> so as Steve Martin got back up, 
Jerry just grabbed the wife and Steve and took a picture and he turned his head in disgust, looking away. I think he's looking away from Jerry with the most disgusted look on his oh. face. So damn it, Jerry Pearlswig, you're our hero, Dan. Yeah, he got he got the revenge for you. Right. And if you want to see if you want to see the documentary, it's actually on my YouTube channel, yeah. which is youtube.com slash after hours TC. It's search, excellent. Search Jerry Pearlswig. How do you spell Pearlswig? P-E-A-R-L-S-W-I-G. Just like it sounds. Pearl's Wig. And you will see this movie and you'll see that picture in that documentary about him and Steve Martin. Yes. <laughs> now I am glad to, to to get the torch passed down to me from Jerry Pearl. Yeah, Wig. that's yes. that's huge. Uh, I miss you, Jerry. If you're out there in, in, in shoppy land, uh, you know, in the great, great big uh, hunt. St. Peter, guy. before I come in, can I have your autograph? <laughs> <laughs> Is Jesus around? <laughs> I need a picture with him. What do you mean not today? Oh, uh, how long's the day last in heaven? About sixty million years. Oh, I can wait. <laughs> I, I, I waited that long for Susan Anton. <laughs> Yeah, the last time we saw uh, we saw dear Jerry Pearl's wig, uh, he was uh, at one of these conventions, and he was in front of uh, Linda Hamilton, I believe, drooling all over no, her no, stills. No, no, it was Helen Slater. Oh, okay, Ooh, Helen Super Slater. Girl. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, yeah, the legend of Billie Jean. Right. She is pretty yeah. cool. And yeah. that was But what? she was nice, and she didn't seem uh, her to, to have her uh, like uh, stills being drooled on by Jerry. <laughs> I she mean, was, uh, poor Jerry. He had a stroke, a couple strokes. Yeah. and But he, you know what? Like I said, he never yeah. quit. Even with his walker, he still mm -hmm. went to these shows to get autographs. And the last image I have is him walking up to Susan Anton after I said goodbye to him. And he just went, Hi, he had a stroke. Hi, Susan. And he's drooling on her stills. Oh, and that is the, it's like the greatest last image I ever had of Jerry. Yeah. He was doing what he loved. Yeah. That was it. Now, he wasn't bedridden. He wasn't sitting there, like, you know, moping and being miserable about it. He was out there pushing his wheeler. Yeah. Getting the still side. Yeah. That is that is Jerry Pearlswig. That's uh, tenacious. That is tenacious. I miss you, Jerry. Yeah. Quincy, you never... Did you meet Jerry? Maybe I did. Uh, <laughs> I've been to a few of these things. I think uh, your paths may have crossed once or twice. Yeah, well, I, I can't remember everybody's names. Uh, it would be like the irresistible force meaning immovable, the object. immovable object. Yeah. If I try to remember uh, everybody's name, I'd be, it's like... Be going crazy. It's impossible to remember all these it is, names. Especially all the people you meet. You meet a lot of people, Quincy. Yeah, they're nice people, too. They are people. Uh, all, I want, all your friends over in England, I want to give them a shout out because they were asking about you. Our good friend Joe, which you've talked to on the phone before. Oh, how we doing? She, she says hi. Uh, uh, Nathan over there says hi. And of course, Sherry from Canada says hi. Well, hello to all my loving fans. Oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. I don't know the rest of that song. Neither do I, but I... Oh, see, can you see? And uh, you know, well, we know that one. That. Yep, so hello oh, to Canada. all... Oh, Canada, shout out Gordon Lightfoot, rest in peace. He was Canadian. Was he? Yeah. Just died. And neither that yeah. night's when his lights were out of You know who Gordon sight. Lightfoot is? You look like he's drawing a blank. I, I, I know who he is, but I don't know who he is. The wreck of the Edmund Gordon Fitzgerald. Lightfoot. There you go. Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Do, 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 do. Right, fine. Right, now I know who it is. Sundown. 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 You better, you better take care. If I'm on you, on my back Okay, yeah, I know exactly who it is. Very catchy Rainy day people. Very catchy tune. Rainy day people in love. lovers. No, no, no. Now, I understand. Ricky, I, hey, heard, I heard through did our... Did you happen to see the most beautiful <laughs> girl in That's the Charlie Rich. Was she crying? The great Charlie Rich. Hey. Th thank you, WRKO, <laughs> circa 1974. <laughs> now, I heard through our travel department mm. that you were going to be going down to what, Nashville? Nashville, Tennessee. One of my favorite places to visit in all the wild world. Yep. What are you going to be doing down in Nashville? You're not cutting Just a record, are you? Not, well, you never, you never know. I'm going to the Glen Campbell <laughs> Museum where you can sing along to some of his music. <laughs> like and a they, rhinestone oh, cowboy. Great, great song, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I visited all the great museums down there. The uh, George Jones Museum, which they've closed. I don't understand why. Uh, Do they the have any John possums in there? They did. They stuffed possums okay. in there. Yeah, he did look like a possum. Right. There's there was no question. The you know who's a huge fan of his? Who? Paul Bearer. Really? Paul well, Bearer. That makes sense. He uh, idolized. George Jones really was, I mean, God, you could talk for hours. I and mean, he was married to Tammy Wynette. He was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tumultuous relationship. Who played him in that new movie? 
Um, I don't know the Was actor, that guy but I, Shannon? I think so. He, he looks. He looks Michael like Shannon. Jaws. Michael Shannon. Yeah, yeah, yeah the guy like who, Jaws. Played, who played the Ice Man. Yes, uh, yeah, that, okay. that him, him, him. Um, but just going down there, just for a little R and R. We fly out on a week from this Friday, right before Memorial Day, and we stay on the Wednesday after Memorial Day. You're going down there for one reason and one reason only. What? Fried bologna. Fried bologna. That's that's one of the one reasons of for my fried bologna sandwich at Robert's Western World right on Broadway. Go in there. It's called the Recession Buster. For under ten dollars, you get a fried bologna sandwich, a bag of chips, a uh, Paps Blue Ribbon beer, and a whoopie pie. What's the name of the place again? Robert's Western World. One of the few places on Broadway that plays authentic country music. This portion of the After Hours broadcast is brought to you by. Robert's Western World, home of the Recession Buster. Come in today for under $10. You can, maybe it's over $10 now, but anyway, it's cheap. Fried bologna sandwich, a bag of chips. What are you doing with your stomach? Uh, a bag of chips, a Pabst Blue Ribbon beer, and a whoopie pie. That's a good deal. It is. And it is Delicious a good deal. Too. And we'll sit back and listen to our famous country music and all the other golden old days. Are you going to all try to find and play with uh, Mini Pearl's price tag? That's on display. Oh, actually, there's a, a great statue of her on display at the Ryman uh, Theater. But her hat is in the Hunt Country Music Hall of Fame. I've seen it. It is. Yes. I stood in front of Hank Williams' suit and I got chills. <laughs> See, you're a big country and western fan. Yeah, I never was. Uh, Tosh Lent introduced me to country music. And, you know, the country that they play now isn't really country, you know. But I kind of went backward. I said, this is good music. Let me see what else is. So I want to find I always have to go back. I have to find out where it came from. Exactly. So I go back all the way back down to Jimmy Rogers and um, uh, Bill Monroe, you know, Blue Moon of Kentucky, all the way up. And I'm, I'm a huge Merle Haggard fan, uh, Mo Bandy, John Anderson, uh, John Conley, all the old greats. I mean, I love them all. I guess my Who favorite would be Waylon Jennings. Waylon Jennings, yeah. I'm, I'm really getting into Waylon stuff right now. Just yeah. only because he was the balladeer on the Dukes of Hazzard. The Dukes of Hazzard. That's a great song. I it mean, is. You know, That's probably his number yeah. one song. Do you know he is uh, the only guest ever to walk off Tom Schneider's show uh, and left them with like 13 minutes of unaired. They had nothing. You mean the Tomorrow Show? Yeah. Really? He was. He waited so long. They they cut into his time by interviewing. I can't remember who they interviewed. Susan they, Anton. It, it, it was a woman. I know. They kept, they kept cutting into his time. And finally, he said, just as they're about to go off on stage, he goes, you do it to me, I'll do it to you. And he got up and he walked out. Good for him. Studio. Yeah. And Tom Snyder said, I have nothing. I got nothing. He walked out. The man walked out. He walked out the door. Well, he was afraid of his teeth. That's why. <laughs> but I, I enjoy Tom Snyder's show. I always watch this. I mean, because we're both night owls, and yeah. I always loved late, 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 late night yeah, talk shows. Yeah, yeah, back in and, the day, you know, sure. it, was just, it was just one-on-one, Tom Snyder. Yeah. He never had theme shows. Nope. Or, well, he kind of did once. He had the Star Trek people on. Oh, he did? He had, oh, uh, wow. I think it was either around when the, the motion picture came out. Or, uh, or what was one of the first Star Trek conventions in the early 70s, whatever it was. Yeah. He had on, I th- obviously Shatner was there. Of course. And I think Scotty and I think Sulu, but I don't remember the entire cast was there. Yeah. But I, enjoy, I enjoyed his show. Imagine a round table. You got Art Bell, Tom Schneider, Norm Nathan, oh. all these guys. Remember all these guys we used to listen to in the wee hours of the morning. But you... Picture this setting, because I think... He's getting very excited when I I brought this concept. Because I I love late night talk show, whether it was on TV or radio. Now, the best... if I I don't want this on TV. I want this on the radio. Oh, audio only. I want it, and I want it in the summertime. Yep. At like four in the morning, when the windows with are your open. windows open <laughs> yep. and the breeze is coming mm, through, I hear you. That is, and you hear, you yeah. know, you may hear a milk truck or something yeah. you go can by. You see the glow of the sunrise. Coming exactly, up. not the sun, but the glow. The glow, <laughs> the, the 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 twilight reversed or whatever you. it is. I get you. That would that episode right there. Yeah. I would pay money. See all the crap they feed into AI. That's what they should feed into the AI generator right, right now. I mean, Art Bell, Tom Schneider, and Norm Nathan. Oh, who else? We gotta we gotta throw someone else in. There's gotta be somebody, or is that it? I think that would be the three. Yeah, that would I, be mean, a, I mean, who who else was there? Yeah. There was huh? Jordan Rich that goes with Norm Nathan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Jordan Rich was too too recent. Yeah, These guys were back. I mean, you're talking Tom Snyder was on from what, like the 60s into, into like the early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Art Bell was on for a good 25 years. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Norm Nathan, local legend here, he was yeah. on for 50 years. Yeah, yeah. That, but what would, now, what would they talk about on that round that's, table? Jeez, that's, that's, that's a good update. question. <laughs> soap opera update. They were talking yeah. about soap operas. <laughs> well, like, like, like I told you, I remember like uh, some of that uh, word for word from WRKO. That's where I, when I was just a kid, Jordan Rich, Norm Nathan, you know, uh, okay, would do soap opera update. Of <laughs> that sounds like something Norm Nathan would have done. Mm-hmm. But Art Bell was like into conspiracy, and Tom Snyder was yeah. like the, the every guy. Maybe they talk about the underbelly of Hollywood. Really, that's my guess. 
Norm Nathan loved to bring. You remember when he used to bring in the strippers from the Naked Eye? Yeah, <laughs> he would just bring them in and just chat Princess with them. Princess Cheyenne. It's just, just, just. I remember her. Just chatting with them. Yeah. Here's this little old guy who looked like who looked like a cross between um, Howard Cunningham from yeah. from Happy Days. Very good. Yeah. And uh, and boss. who was Morocco Mole's uh, Morocco Mole from yeah. uh, from Secret Squirrel? Sure. <laughs> That's and he's that guy was just tremendous. Like yeah. I told you, he's a producer out there. Yeah, I've been in contact with him as we yeah, yeah. we mentioned on the last show. I was the Macho Man. Great on the program. stories, great but, stories. But uh, yeah, that that that. See, th- for those of you who are out there who listen to podcasts, and I hope you've listened to ours. <laughs> Back in the day, there were no podcasts. No. There was just talk radio. Yeah. You had your drive time afternoon talk radio. A guy like Jerry Williams just yelling and screaming. Or you his know, sex survey. He was like the Jerry Springer of... Uh, yeah. of like uh, Rest in peace. Yes, rest in peace to Jerry Springer. Amazing talent who got... Who was uh, had the pulse of America, yeah. and he knew what they wanted. He did. But um, you had those, those type of talk shows in the afternoon. Where they would just hang up on people. Yep. And then you would have the political stuff in the evening. Morton you know, Downey. The, the, the Bo- Wally George. Wall, the great Wally oh, George. The Wally George show. That was different. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about like AM radio. You'd have guys like David Brudnoy on oh. that. Just talking about da, 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 bo- da, 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 boring shit. Avi Nelson. Remember Avi Nelson? I don't remember. He was no. in WHDH. My mother used to listen to Avi Nelson. Just boring shit. And then you'd have the late night. And these guys were on from 11 to 5 in the morning. Yeah. And sometimes they, they had to make stuff up. Yeah. Because, I mean, let, let's honestly, we're, we're approaching 45 minutes. These guys were on the air for five four, four, hours. Four or five hours, yeah. Every night. Good point. And they had, they, had to, they had to come up with stuff. Yeah. You know, what are we going to do tonight? Let's call a pay phone in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, you know, see if anybody answers. Or, you know. See, that would be something to revive right here. But gee, there's no pay There's phones. no pay phones. All right. Or let's, you know, let's get some strippers from the naked eye. We can't. It's gone. Yeah. Um, or, you know, let's just, you know. You know they, but they had callers. You know, let's have people. You know, well, we got uh, we got Judy on the line from uh, Portland, Maine. Oh, hi, Norm. <laughs> do, 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 you, do, you, do you like seafood? Well, it's free. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you, know you had all these weird characters that you would see like on an Andy Griffith show calling in. I'm looking up how to find the payphone any anywhere in the world. Oh, if you find one, we're calling it. Things you should know. Payphone prize. You know what we're going to do? We're going to take a big time commercial break, and we're going to try to find a payphone somewhere we in this should. world, and we're going to call it. So we'll be right back after this big time commercial break. there. I'm Abigail Harwich, the new executive producer of After Hours with TC Rustani, and I want you to follow my Twitter. Follow the information at the bottom of the screen. I can't wait to tweet you. Hi, I'm Captain Dave Marciano, and how would you like the freshest local New England seafood shipped to you overnight? No running around from store to store to find what you like. We have it here at AngelicaSeafoods.com. Everything from tuna, haddock, cod, clams, lobsters, scallops, we have it all. The finest seafood overnight to your door anywhere in the continental U.S. AngelicaSeafoods.com. All righty, welcome back from that big time commercial break. That's AngelicaSeafoods.com for all of your seafood needs from our good friend Captain Marciano from the number one show on television, Wicked Tuna. Also during that commercial break, we found out that you cannot call a payphone anywhere in the world on a cell phone because of the technology just doesn't mesh anymore. Yeah, isn't that terrible? So on the phone with us right now through WhatsApp is our good friend from Canada, Toronto, Canada, Sherry. What's going on, Sherry? Wow. Hi, everybody. Calling. I'm calling from Toronto. Yes, I am. Very nice. It correctly, instead of Toronto, <laughs> I say Toronto. It's Toronto. We can call it whatever we want. It's our show. <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> That's right. Now, Sherry, you've been exactly. li- you've been living in Toronto your entire uh, life, right? Yes, my entire life. Now, yes. what, what? Now, what? What made you not want to leave? Because I have family and friends. All my best friends are here. Why would I leave? Because it's Toronto. <laughs> I love Toronto. I know. You're the number one spokesperson for Toronto. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, so give us the phone. What's it like being Canadian? Well, it's, it's, it's awesome being Canadian because we're all, we're all like how we're, we're Canada nice. You know how they say 
a state is Canada. They're saying something else is nice in, I, in the U.S. I heard it's Canada dry, but I've never heard of Canada uh, nice. Uh. <laughs> okay, yes, we do have Canada dry ginger ale that is also sold in America. Correct. Yeah, Canada, like, it's, it's, it's a beautiful country, first of all, beautiful country, beautiful people. It's a happy life. Everything is good here. And it's 46 degrees there right now. No, what, what is that in Celsius? Oh, I don't know. Because That's they're in that it's, Celsius it's, crap. It's like, it, it, never mind that. You're the only one in, uh, almost in the whole wide world that doesn't go by Celsius. Because we're normal. No, that's not true. It's like four Celsius. Now, to me, four, oh, mean, four means so, so cold. Four means like I need to put on you know twenty seven blankets and pajamas, or like you know, and sit next to a roaring fire. Exactly. Like, like when, like when it's a hundred degrees here, when we're roasting our, you know, gonads off. Yeah, I like that. that. That's only forty degrees in Canada. Oh, well, right. Like we have a frost advisory. Well, well, you're in Canada. You're always cold. It's cold here tonight. Yeah, no, yes. See, Boston. Okay, so let me see. I have Boston on my phone to see the. It's colder here. Celsius. By one so, degree. Okay, you're you're eight Celsius, Boston. Yeah. Now, 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 Ricky yes. Bittman, you're a world traveler. Do you have any questions for Sherry in Toronto? Are the Maple Leafs still in it, or are they out? No, they're out. Oh. Don't make me so sad. They're out. I, I was down in Florida when uh, they, uh, whoever they were playing in the last round a few weeks ago, uh, they won. I was right. in, a, I was in a bar room and they won. And I, I had that app on my phone that you can play um, songs through the jukebox. And I played Stomp and Tom Connors, uh, the good old hockey game song. Oh. And uh, yes. all the Leafs fans went crazy. Right. Yes, because he's Canadian. Yeah, he's great. Yes. He's he's got a he's pizza pie Canadian. song. The pizza, pizza pie. I just played it on my, my last uh, jukebox episode. You'd like that song, Quincy. Oh, that's fun. Oh, Stomp and Tommy. He was, they used to play these uh, his song at the, uh, what is it, at every Leafs game they played, I think it was. And I think oh. he's in the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, Hall of Fame. Oh, st who? Stomp, Stomp and Tom Stomp. Connors. He's a, he's a, he's a oh. Canadian musical fixture. Great, great, underrated no, talent. I, I do know who he is, yeah. yes. The Hockey Hall of Fame is in Toronto, just FYI. I think he's in the Maple Leafs Hall of Fame. I think like he they the, oh. the Leafs have the they, the Leafs dedicated something to him in some way. I know, I'm not yes, sure he's in the cool. Hockey Hall of Fame though. Now, Sherry, who Should are your all-time favorite Canadians? And you can't say yourself. No, I'm not going to say myself. I'm not <laughs> conceited that way. Uh, my favorite uh, Roberta Bondar. And who is that? <laughs> She's the first female astronaut for canada that went up to the international space station she didn't even make it to the moon no only only one only a few people went and, to and the what moon. and what country went to the moon what country oh boy here we go america 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 i know that so roberta bondar wanted to be an astronaut from a little girl so, okay you know she got she her dreams came true she worked for NASA and went up there. Like, I'm just, I think so much of her. So of all the Canadians that have ever lived, you're talking like, you know, Dan Aykroyd, Pamela Anderson, you're picking this chick. Well, yes, I do love, I do love Pam Anderson. I do love Mike Myers. I know you He's a like dick. Mike He's Myers. a dick. I know. Oh. And, you know, William Shatner's Canadian. Another dick. <laughs> is Steve Martin from Canada? <laughs> no, Steve Martin isn't from Canada. No. Well, we can deport him if you want him. <laughs> now, didn't uh, did, didn't Miss Bondar serve uh, two terms as the Chancellor of Trent University from like 2003 to 2009? Who is this you're talking about? Uh, Roberta Bondar. Two oh, terms yeah, as the Roberta Chancellor Bondar. of Trent yes, Trent yes. University. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You, and, uh, we we know this, but you don't. I do know this. Yes, I do, because I love her. She's she's my favorite Canadian. If I had to pick one, like you asked me, that's who I pick. Is she still kicking? She's seventy seven. She yeah, seventy seven years old. She's seventy seven, huh? I know, I know, yeah. I know about this one. I know you do. You, you're a world traveler, Ricky Bittman. You know a lot about her. You know, I, you, you learn Ricky. something new on this show all the time. It's true. What was her name? Roberto Duran? What was her name? No, Bonda. She was Roberta the, she, Bondar. If I remember correctly, she was the first astronaut to receive a star on Canada's uh, Walk of Fame. 
Yes, yes. Yeah. Where, yes. Well, now, where is the Canadian Walk of Fame? At the Elgin Theatre in Toronto. Oh, is everything in Toronto? Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Well, Toronto's the biggest city in Canada. What's your favorite, other than Toronto, what's your favorite city in Canada? Um, I'll, I'll say, I'll say... Be, I'll say Vancouver, maybe. Mm -hmm. Vancouver. Oh, that's way out on the West Coast, right? I know, I know. But, you know, Vancouver has mountains and, like, it's just, they have views. Like, where I live in Toronto, there's no views here. No views? Just tall buildings, but that's not a view. Well, of course yeah. it's a view. You're up on the top floor and looking out. Yeah. You go to the Empire no, State Building. The yeah, look yeah, out the window. I'm sure you get a good view. Yeah, and Quincy would know that. Hey, do they have milk in Canada? Pardon? Do they have milk in Canada? Of course we have milk. And how much does a gallon of milk cost in Canada? Because everything's skyrocketed up there. They don't sell them by the gallon. Thank you. <laughs> what, do they sell, Thank you. what do they sell by the, the, the pint? The liter. Oh, the liter? L liter. Well, how much is a liter of milk? It depends where you buy. It's like three, three <laughs> something for one liter. Well, that's pretty cheap. Four, yeah. Something. But you yeah. need you need four liters to make a gallon. Wait a minute. Do they use dollars up there, or do they use like rocks and seashells? <laughs> what are they? Oh, they use uh, loonies. Ooh. We, we loonies? loonies and toonies. Yeah, loonies and toonies. Loonies and toonies. You know a lot about loonies, there, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> is that uh, how they? Okay. Just a different Hi, kind Sherry, of money. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> South Boston Jeff here. Uh, I, I just, uh, I'm a huge South Park fan. So, uh, how do you think uh, the show <laughs> South Park uh, represents Canada? They're not kind to us. No. Why is it? No. I don't know why South Park isn't kind to us. Well, because we're not America. That's why. Well, we're everybody, everybody in the world forward. hates Canada or forgets that Canada's even there. Mm. Uh, you know what? I, it, you know what? That makes us safer. Why? Why? Because you, you don't think a lot of terrorists want to blow up Canada? No, 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 I don't. I don't believe that. No. Why? Our only problem is we're attached to America. And you know what our problem is? We're attached to Canada. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is, South, <laughs> is South Park popular out there, or uh, do people uh, spite it? Yeah. No, we get South. We get South Park here. I want to go down to Yonge Street. There's jobs down there. Yonge Street is the longest. I don't know if it still is, but it was the youngest, the longest street in the world, Young Street. They got lots of jobs down on Young Street. It's a famous sketch from no. SCTV starring John Candy, Young Street sketch. Yes, and, yes, I. And uh, I, yes. They, they, and that's where I first heard Stomp and Tom Connors, Connors, on oh, that sketch. On that sketch oh, from SCTV, okay. great sketch. By the way. <clears throat> I loved SCTV. Young Street at Y O N G E, Young Street. Yeah. Have you ever like, been down? I would say John Candy would be would be my other favorite Canadian. Great Canadian. Yeah, John Candy. Yes. Hey, Quincy, why don't you go put your uh, liter of milk there in the fridge, eh? <laughs> 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 Grab me a pack of smokes while you're at it. Sure. All right, you know, it's like <laughs> don't no, forget sure. the we cashews. Call we call them cigarettes here. Cigarettes, huh? Well, they call them smokes. They call them cigarettes. You know. Uh, you don't want to know what they call them in England. <laughs> How about some back bacon while you're I at it? I know what they call them in England. <laughs> there's nothing offensive. Of that's that's not offensive. No, in England it's not. So yeah, like Ricky Bimmy, have you ever had a back bacon sandwich? Uh, probably. Yeah, I used to go up to Montreal when I was a kid, just for the hockey games. Um, and I'm sure I had some back bacon while I was up there. What about you, Sherry? Do you love back bacon? We. We call it female bacon here. You call it female bacon? Female bacon? Female. Female. Is that like email? <laughs> no, it's, we call it female bacon. It's female bacon. bacon. Yeah, female. Look it up. My aunt would say that when she had to make a number one. She goes, excuse me, I have to go make a female. Well, we'll find out. I'll have to look it up. And, <laughs> what, what does it taste like? Just like regular bacon? <laughs> it's thicker. No, thicker it cut. It tastes like regular bacon. It's it heartier. It's a heartier cut. Hmm. Yes, it's it's different part of the. Now, before we let you go, Sherry, I wanted to get your take yeah. on King Charles's coronation. Okay. Being that Canada is ruled by the throne, you're a yes. Commonwealth of of England under their power. What's your yes, take on are. that farce that they had on TV two weeks ago? Okay, I love the pomp and circumstance of all this sort of stuff, but I do dislike very much. Charles, King Charles, and 
queen consort Camilla mm. because they are responsible for Princess Diana's death. Yeah. Oh, that's a conspiracy. Did you see the, the Grim that's Reaper at the coronation? I did. That was kind of creepy. <laughs> I did see that. The Grim Reaper made an appearance. So why do you know? So, so so why do you think uh, Prince Chuck and uh, Lady Cornelius there had uh, Princess Diana whacked? No, I don't believe they had her whacked. I believe because they were fooling around while they were married, Prince Charles and Princess Diana. They put her to the edge, and then she yeah. she had to get a divorce, and then that's why she ended up no, dying. No, she was whacked by the royal family. No, she was. Yes, yeah, she was, and they did it in did. Paris in a tunnel. Now, have you recently? I don't know if you noticed this, Ricky Bittman, but I saw this on a, on a, on a conspiracy show. The license plate changed from when they left the hotel until they were crashed. Really, underneath the tunnel in Paris. I've never seen that, but you know that doesn't surprise me. So, Sherry, why do you now, as as Canadians, right? You yes. know, you're yes. part of North America, right? Yes. You uh, saw what yes. we did to the British about 300 years ago. We told them to hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back here no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, <laughs> yeah. Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come yeah. back yeah. no more. <laughs> what you <laughs> say? So why don't you do that? Why don't, why, don't, why don't you, as Canadians, tell these people to go shit in their crown? <gasps> I, I, okay, because the British and the French help Canada... Uh, fight against the Americans for our land. That's why I can't do that because without the British and the Fre uh, the French, I, our country would not be what it is today. And what is it, boring? <laughs> no, it's not boring. No, no, it's well, not boring. Well, you know what, Sherry? All this right. has been a fascinating interview and you're don't welcome. Forget this. Yeah, Thank don't forget you. they have uh, uh, Niagara Falls over there. It's not boring. We no. have Niagara Falls also. No, our side of the no. falls stinks. Okay, I've never been exactly. there. Exactly. We had the Horseshoe Falls. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So unbelievable. And Tim Hortons. Well, well, thank yeah. you, Sherry, for, for for being on our program here because our. So nice to talk to you guys. Thank you. And we just have to have you them. have a real good night, okay? <laughs> All of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you for watching our show. And <laughs> now, have a good night. You're so, now, you're now, Sherry, so I I night. just have one song to say because you say that the English and the French helped you fight the Americans. Yes. Well, we I have one, because we're going to take over Canada one day. You know what song we're going to sing? Your what? land is our land. Oh. This land is my land. <laughs> From Montreal Hall to the New York Island. Take your friggin' loonies and shove them where you can't uh, go off the Niagara Falls in a barrel. No, this is this one was a friend of yours? <laughs> this woman is a friend of mine. Sherry, Jeepers, Sherry, creepers. Sherry knows I'm I'm kidding. And uh, Sherry yes, and I've been I've been longtime friends for a couple of years now. That's nice. And uh, Sherry, I, every time we go on our WhatsApp chats with other people from around the world, this is basically what we do we just battle back and forth on whose country's better and you can do it civilly which is so nice we you can can't, do it civilly. you can't do that in this country you can't disagree with anybody sherry actually came down here last summer for a tour of boston oh, that's right that's right and me and colonel bull montana gave her a tour of the city oh you're a patient woman oh i know i was i had a, the most lovely time well, that's good. Next time, Quincy will join you. <laughs> you yes, I, I do plan on coming again this summer. Oh, well, then oh, you know what? Then there you go. Then you and Quincy will have to Another go. Another fan is about to be born. We'll, we'll have to go down to you. We brought you to Kelly's, and you had, a, you had a roast beef sandwich down in Kelly's. Yes, I did, yes. And Quincy just had his first roast beef sandwich down in Kelly's uh, about a week ago. It's real tasty. I know you shared the picture. Oh, you saw the, the picture. With, Wonderful. With the milk, with the... <laughs> there you go unbelievable sherry thank you for participating in our program okay, thank you so, and so anytime much. we need any canadian information we know who to contact exactly take good care guys thank you thanks sherry bye-bye welcome and remember this is after hours and we what we, we never, never close. close i passed the cheese balls <laughs> This is Ricky Bittman, host of Ricky Bittman's Jukebox Podcast. I want to thank all my fans for making my podcast one of the top podcasts in the country. From the bottom of my heart and the bottom of my co-host Galen Santo Padre's heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. Up, up, and away, hey!
Hi, this is Quincy Briscoe. To all my fans, don't drink and drive.